Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good to be with you again. I am Pastor Anthony L. Walker coming to you from uh, Transformation Ministries located at 115 Coffee Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia. Uh, please check out Transformation Ministries' webpage, which is tm-church.com. And also, we teach you here, we want to provide educational information, instructions, and uh, provide hopefully an inspiration that you will uh, indulge and engage into what the word is saying. Thus says the Lord, and it's all for your transformation. And so let's get right to the message today. And um, I'm going to open up um, with a scripture two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I brought to you a message titled, I Won't Complain. Uh, the scripture text came from Philippians chapter 2. Verse 14, which says, do all things without murmuring and disputing. It's really, in a nutshell, it says, stop complaining. I won't complain. So that was that message. And why did I mention that from a message two weeks ago? Well, today's message is titled, work out your own salvation. So that, how does that tie in to I won't complain? Well, the scripture text that I presented two weeks ago um, was from Philippians uh, 2.14. So this week, uh, the, the message is also coming from Philippians chapter 2, but it's the two verses prior to that other message. And um, I'm not sure, but let me read this, let me read the scripture here first. Uh, Philippians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, uh, and that's that's the key right there, always obeying, not as in my presence only, but not but now much more in my absence. You know how people might behave in your face and get naughty when you know when you when you're not in the in the picture, but they're talking about obedience, how you are obedient. Um and then it goes on to say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasures. So I did not plan to continue in chapter 2 of Philippians. It just kind of turned out that way. So whatever, for whatever the reason is for the return to Philippians chapter 2, I don't know. But I promise you that uh, this lesson is an on-time word. Because, you know, I, we got to work out our salvation. And you, you might be, some of you might be thinking a little puzzle, you know, saying, hey, we can't do that. But before we get into all that, let us pray for the service and for the message. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for this opportunity, Lord God. And before just giving you thanks, Lord God, let us say that we are very grateful and giving thanks, Lord God, for who you are. And you are the Lord of lords and King of kings. You are the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth and all things, great and small, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being mindful of us. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. You are great and greatly to be praised. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I was talking about the scripture. Um, so, I did not plan it to happen this way, but... Have you ever been in a conversation or overheard a conversation uh, where someone would say uh, to or about someone else that you need to work out your own salvation? Um, no, some of you haven't, but let me just say this. I have, and actually, just in the recent time, uh, lately, I've been hearing people say that, whether I hear someone say it on YouTube or actually people talking. And they would say, tell someone or say something about someone. They need to work out their own salvation. So this phrase was spoken in, in all these instances as though a person uh, should not or need not depend on someone else for their salvation. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because your parents went to church is not going to save you. Mm -hmm. you know, and just going to church is not going to save anybody. But I'm just saying, people look at it. And, and they, they said, no, you got to work out your own salvation, baby. Mm -hmm. That's how they said the, the big mama said. You know, so you got to work out your own salvation and not depend on someone else to do it. You are responsible. You got to do it yourself. So you think that this is true? Can a person actually work out their own salvation? 
And people were questioning. And I believe that many people would say only God can work out your salvation. So they would uh, say that Jesus died for your sins so you too can be saved. So how can you work out your own salvation? Only Jesus can do that for you. So that's that's the argument that some people will have. But I, I, I put this out there. If you and only you are responsible for your salvation, is there any need for God in the matter? And if God and only God is responsible for your salvation, is there any need for you in the matter? In, in this message that I'm presenting to you today, I will explain how and by whom your salvation is to be worked out. I want to cover some things. And, you know, some people may not agree because sometimes we grow up and we get used to a conversation. We get used to a routine and habits of what we heard all of our lives. And sometimes we don't even study to show ourselves approved. We don't get into the word to see what it actually says. You can't take somebody else's word for it. You got to work out your own salvation. So. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, it explains how believers ought, how they ought to live. That's what it's talking about, how you ought to live. The command to work out your own salvation is about living for God. That's what it's all about, living for God. It is important that you adhere to the teachings of the Bible to obtain and to continue in your salvation. I had, I, I had a doctor appointment the other day. And the lady who was taking my blood pressure, she was asking me questions and asking me how I was feeling. I told her I was tired. She said, why were you tired? I said, um, uh, went to bed really late, really, really late. Why did you go to bed so late? I said, I was writing. She said, what were you writing? Because I was writing a sermon, this, actually this sermon. And she said, oh, you're a pastor. And I said, I am. Mm -hmm. And then she started asking me about, uh, uh, do, you, do you take up offerings? And I said, yeah, I do. Like, were well, you gonna give me an offering? Uh, that that's what wasn't where it was going, and and uh, I said I I do. She said, uh, why? I say I take it to help with the expenses of running the ministry. Uh, you don't pay your mortgage with it, and I said no, I, I do not. I said I don't even take a salary or anything, and she said, well, you should you should use it to pay your mortgage. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then. I say, you know, the thing, I try to help people uh, by presenting the words of, of, from the Bible. And I would thus say, so whatever the Lord put on my heart and my mind to share with people. And I say, you know, the thing is to get to heaven. I said, don't you want to go to heaven? She said, no, I don't think I want to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't want to go to heaven? Uh, she said, no, heaven is what you make. And I, I hear this a lot lately that is subjective and all that, and it's what you make it. You know, and so um, this person, she uh, said, I say, do you believe the Bible? She said, yeah, I believe the Bible. I say, do you know the Bible? She goes, oh, no, I don't really know. I said, you don't read? I said, wait a minute, how do you believe something you don't even know? But I kind of choose, you know, and I was been with my pastor for over 20 years, and she just, she's just a wonderful person. And I said, so is she teaching you the stuff that you're saying to me right now? And um, and I was just thinking, oh, this is perfect for this message. You got to work out your own salvation mm -hmm. because she thinks she can pick and choose whatever she want to do. And she said, if I'm good to my family and good to my friends, then, then, then I'm good. <laughs> and when I close my eyes, I know I'm good. So my, when she dies, that she knows she's good. Uh, and I said, just go ahead and take my blood pressure. <laughs> but you know, it, it went up a little bit. It went up a little bit, but you no, know, we have to work out our own salvation. And so, if you're familiar with my method of teaching, then you know that I like to break down scriptural verses uh, in, its, in parts, and in like individual parts, hopefully to provide a better understanding of the sum of its part, you know, the complete message. And so this one is, is no exception. So to work out means to have a planned, successful outcome. You know, you're working something out because you want an outcome and you want that outcome to be uh, successful and you're working out that means it's something that you you're planning to do you're working it out right. so working out salvation pertains to your personal conduct and obedient and faithful daily living it's all about that like i said in the beginning it's, it's for living how you live for god you must live a righteous life 
while at the same time realizing that all the power of your obedience comes from the Spirit of God. It's come mm -hmm. from God himself. Mm -hmm. And Paul, in this in this Philippians chapter 2, Paul is addressing believers in Philippi. And so, but what he says applies to you as well. It wasn't just a story of what he was saying to the in Philippians. He's, he's saying this to all of us to hear. And we all benefit from it. Paul is saying that you can work out your own salvation because God is supplying you the willingness and the power and also the pleasure in doing it. We can't work out our salvation and be disgruntled all the time and, and bitter all the time and hateful all of the time. You're not working it out. In Philippians chapter 2, 13, which is part of what we've already read. Now, basically, I was just, I'm putting this scripture out there to support what I just said about the willingness and the power and the pleasure in doing it. Because in Philippians 2, 13, it says, For it is God which worketh in you both the will and, and to do of his good pleasures. So let, you know, that your will be my will, Lord God, and thy will be done. And we want to call ourselves Christians. We got to be Christ-like. And so we got to be, the wheels got to match up. We can't, uh, like, want to follow Jesus, but then we want to do our own will, mm -hmm. which is contrast what, what uh, Christ is, how he is. So you know, God worked it in so you can work it out. God worked it in all mm -hmm. the, the things that you need to work out your salvation. So God's provided that. God works in you to be in his will, and God works in you to do uh, his good pleasures. He gives you the desires and the strength to live for him. And you know we need it because people go, Lord, give me strength. <laughs> we, we say it all, we're asking for it because we know that we need it. So God will make you strong to obey him. Because sometimes it's hard because all the distractions, all the temptations around us, all the influences that are all around us. We're in this world. We're not of this world, but this world is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I tell you the truth. And it's becoming more and more overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So God works in you to accomplish his purposes. His work in you by, he works in you by equipping you to do his will, which brings glory to him and satisfaction to you. So you, every, everybody comes out a winner. Everybody comes out pleased when you're in his will. I previously stated that many people would say that only God can work out your salvation and that you do not have a part in the matter. I hear that all the time. They believe that God's grace is all that is needed for your salvation. And you know where I'm going with this. Some of you probably do. Uh, because I bring this scripture up from time to time. Because sometimes I can present a whole message on salvation. I can break it down. I talk about God's plan of salvation. And I have a series, God's plan of salvation, where I explain that. And then I have it where I talk about repentance. A whole message on repentance. Another whole message on baptism. Another whole message on receiving the Holy Ghost. And I present all of that. But people want to say, hey, Ephesians 2.8. You know, they just, they want to look at that and they use that to justify everything and ignore all the other scriptures regarding salvation that I might present. And what does Ephesians chapter two say? What does it say? It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. And they read that. And when they do it, they say, hey. It's not of our own selves. It's a gift of God. So salvation is a gift. So salvation by grace through faith is at the heart of every Christian religion. Or it should be. And if it's not, it's not a Christian religion. However, very few people understand um, it the way I'm going to present it for you in this message. I need you to pay very close attention and, and, and have an open mind. And don't be so stubborn and, and, and close everything up so you don't hear what I have to say. I mean, you don't have to agree, but at least listen to see if you should maybe question what you have learned or know all your life. 
<laughs> Arm y'all folded. Got sour grape look, you know. But so just pay attention. The grace and the faith mentioned in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, consists of two separate parts that must be worked out and connected to produce salvation. Yes. Two parts, two responsibilities here. On the part of God, there is grace. You cannot work out the grace part because only Jesus could have done that. Only he was qualified to die for our sins, to pay, to pay that sin debt. And when people read Ephesians 2.8, it's like that's all they see. That's all they take in. That's all they receive. But there's more. You got to be open. And I, I tell people sometimes, people got to take responsibility in the matter. On the part of man, there is faith. It is a must that you work out that faith. You got to do that faith part. That's your responsibility. And because it is something that you have to work out, that makes it a work. Because people are like, you can't do it. There's no work you can do to get it. Because they listen to what they have been taught all their lives. They listen, but they're missing. I like that. I'm going to use that again sometimes. <laughs> they're listening. They might listen, but they're missing. They're listening, but they're, they're not taking in. So let's examine what grace is first, and then we'll uh, look into what faith is second. So grace is God's undeserved and unmerited favor as demonstrated in salvation of sinners and the bestowing of blessings. God's kindness is a gift that we do not deserve. And that's the grace. That's what God extends to us. Because we do, not, we do not deserve it. But yes, he's providing it. Jesus did that. So you have not earned nor deserved God's gift of grace. You have not. No matter how good you are, you have not earned it. That is what makes it grace in the first place. By God giving to us and we're undeserving. So when you accept God's grace, it's a gift. So you can receive a gift or you can reject a gift. Mm -hmm. And I also tell people you can return a gift. Oh, yeah. So you accept it with faith. Mm -hmm. Knowing what his grace has accomplished, you should motivate, it should motivate you to live your life in a manner that is as pleasing and uplifting and it's because now you are a child of God and it should reflect, you should be reflecting his light on the world. You can't walk or you can't, you can't name it and claim it to say that, you know, I'm a child of God. Okay, which God are you talking about? Because the way you show everything in your, the way you live, you, it's, hard to, it's hard to say that you're a child of the most high God. I cannot mention grace without mentioning mercy. Mercy is not getting the punishment that we do deserve. So, and so, though often used interchangeably, somebody say they love grace and mercy and, and all that stuff, um, there's a difference. Still, they are two sides of the same coin. So, grace is when you get good things you don't deserve. And mercy is when you are spared from the bad things that you do deserve. For salvation, we get that by grace. Mm -hmm. The opportunity for salvation mm -hmm. is presented. But if we accept it, how do we accept it? Through faith. And so some people think that, okay, I believe. If you say I believe, you know, we, we were talking earlier in the scripture reading saying, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is a child of God. You lie with your lips. You can't lie with your heart. You got to mm -hmm. live. God sees the heart. Mm -hmm. God's grace is the price that Jesus paid for all sinners. All sinners. Who are all sinners? Everybody on this planet. Everybody, we were all born sinners, and Jesus died to pay that sin debt for everybody. 
all of us. So, however, not everyone is going to be saved. Not everyone is going to heaven just because Jesus died for their sin. Right? Jesus did it for everybody. So, if this is true, and it is, there must be something else, something else involved in your salvation. Because Jesus died for everyone's sin. He paid that debt. That was the grace. And he did it for everybody. No exceptions. He did it for everybody. And so if it was only his grace that had that that was the, the factor in this, then everybody would go to heaven. Amen. But not everybody is going to heaven. More people would not go to heaven. Only a few are going to make it according to what the Bible says. The faith part of salvation is up to man. People say that salvation does not require work on our part. They cannot be any farther from the truth because it's through faith and it requires work. In James chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, it says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So you can't have faith and not do works. Okay? And of course it's dead if you do. Mm -hmm. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you show thee my faith by my works. I will show you my faith by my works. The works don't get us into heaven. I know that that might be the thing. It's not the works, but faith. But then the evidence of your faith mm -hmm. is your work or your works. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it because you, know, you may be puzzled about that because you hear all your life. You hear that there's nothing you can do to get into heaven. It has to be something that you do and it has to be something that you do not do mm -hmm. to get in heaven because the invitation it's for everyone. The, the grace has been paid. The debt has been paid uh, by grace for everybody. But through faith is what seals the deal. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's our part. And people are not taking responsibility for their part. And because of that, they will not make it in. Not the form of your chosen. Acts chapter 2. I mean, yeah, chapter 2, verse 38 summarizes God's plan of salvation. And I just say that because it's where you can find uh, what God says you must do mm -hmm. to be saved. And I'm going to get into that. Prior to verse 38, Acts chapter 2, 38, Peter was preaching to the Jews. And he was letting them know that they, cru that they crucified their Lord and Savior. And so down to people, they, he gave them the, the gospel message. And now... Uh, the people are saying these Jews, you know, the, is the Bible in the chapter Acts or the actions of the of the apostles, and they're preaching to the different people, the Jews, Samaritans, the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and those believers that was under John's baptism. And so Peter's preaching that first sermon in Acts to the Jews. And so now they say, if if we crucified our Savior, then how can how are we gonna be saved? Mm -hmm. And they put the words out there. They said, what shall we do? That's what you read at the end of thir verse 37. What shall we do? And Peter responded in uh, verse 38. And this is the faith part. Peter says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was his response to them when they asked, what do we need to do to be saved? Repent. Be baptized. And I have had people to say, well, baptism is just an outer expression of your inner faith. And, and so I'm like, everything is an outward expression. Everything you do is an outward expression of your inner faith or what you believe. And that's why it's an outward expression of it. Everything's beginning on the inside out. Your salvation comes when both grace and faith are fulfilled. 
So if you don't, if the if the faith part is not there, the grace part is not going to get you into heaven. It's not saying God can't do things. God put it out there, how how it works. And so yes, we have free will. So here's the opportunity. We we're gonna. I'm going to manifest myself in Jesus and he's going to die for your sin debt. It's going to be the sacrifice for your sins. And now you have an opportunity to accept that gift and show that you accept it through faith. Think about it. Think about it. God has already done his part concerning the grace. The grace was Jesus' sacrifice. Only Jesus was qualified to provide the grace, not ourselves. And that's what that part of the scripture in Ephesians 2, 8 says, and not of your own self. We couldn't do that part, but we can do the next part. We can do the next part. So you got to do your part concerning faith. That is the will of God, your obedience to God. That's repentance. That's baptism in Jesus' name. That's receiving of the Holy Ghost. It's all those things and even more. It's living for God the right way. The right way is the righteous way, doing what's right. And there's a lot of scriptures, and I didn't include them in this message, that talks about uh, if you're this type of person, that type of person, you do these things, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There's a long list. Just, just get in get in the New Testament. Get in there and get in um, Galatians and, and Ephesians and, and, and read. And it tells you, if you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, but Jesus died for my sins. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. That's his, He extended that grace to you. But what did you do with your faith? You rejected yeah. that grace because you have no faith. If you have faith, you would be obedient. You would be in his will. You would not do these things that he is telling you that you should not do. So you have not done that through faith. And you reject his gift. When your faith embraces God's grace, salvation is manifest. That's, it has to be that way. That's the way God ordained it. That's the way he orchestrated it. And the Bible tells us what it is. So it's up to you if you're going to receive it or reject it. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says, Not of works, uh, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. And I put that scripture out there so I can say this. So faith, grace, and good works agreeably work together. Yes, sir. The evidence of, of, of the whole plan of salvation. You cannot simply accept and believe in God while you do not put forth any effort in overcoming your sins and following God's commandment. Mm -hmm. Overcome sin Follow God's commandments. You have to be able to do that. So let us take one last look at Ephesians chapter 2 and 8, and we're going to move on. Because we're talking about uh, total, uh, how to work out your salvation, your own salvation. And it's true, it's your own salvation. You can't do good works and then your brother or sister is doing bad works, but because you're doing good works, they're going to be saved. No, they got to work out their own salvation. You got to work out your own. So in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, I'm going to break it down, this, this, this verse. For by grace are ye saved. So what's that saying? Jesus' grace is in his merciful paying of the penalty of our sins. Mm -hmm. Now through faith, our faith is in our obedience to God's commandments and not of, and the part that says, and not of yourselves, we should not accomplish, or we cannot accomplish paying the sin debt ourselves because we're not qualified because we have sin in our lives. Jesus was without sin, the land without spot or blemish. 
not of our own selves. So it is a gift of God. We can accept the gift by our faith. We can reject the gift through our disobedience. I hope that talking or what I just explained about Ephesians 2.8 will help you to understand it, whoever's listening, uh, a little better or a lot better. Or just, just completely, I hope you understand it. I hope you got it. Because if you can't get that, then I don't know what to say for you, except that you really need to get in prayer and you really need to get into your word to find the other scriptures that confirm and support what we just went over. Other scriptures are out there in the Bible that will do that. So working out your salvation also involves understanding the consequence of sin. You have to understand the consequences of sin. Although God is loving and merciful and forgiving, he will still hold you accountable for your disobedience. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. And what is that? Fear and trembling, what is that? It is all in the service of the Lord. That's what it is. Let's look at this next uh, Psalms chapter 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So what am I talking about about fearing God? I'm referring to a reverential, uh, reverential fear. So giving God the honor and glory he deserves and avoiding uh, the disciplining of his displeasure. Such fear protects against temptations and sin. Yeah, you need to be scared straight. Remember that <laughs> that thing on TV where you people kids they send them to the correction facility so they can see the inmates. They will try to scare them straight. I'm sure those kids had fear and trembling, and by that that will cause some of them to say, "Hey, I don't want to end up here." I don't want to do anything to be in this place. And that's how we need to be so we don't be in that place. Some refer to as hell, but ultimately the lake of fire. You know, you need to be have that fear and trembling effect to make you do what's right to avoid that place. Such fear protects us against those temptations, gives us motivation uh, for obedience and righteous living. It'll motivate me. If you know, like those kids who went to the correction facility, it should motivate them to, yeah. to live right mm -hmm. so they don't end up there. So live right. The, the type of fear that this is the type of fear that brings knowledge and understanding and wisdom. I'm going to put a few scriptures up here where uh, that mentions that. And in Psalms 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, understanding is in there. Have all they that do the commandments. They keep telling us over and over, do the commandments, what God commands. And it, it, it's, the Ten Commandments is a sum. But there were, I think I heard or read that there were 613 commandments or laws that the, the Jews had to follow. Um, but the Ten Commandments summarizes them all. So we have to follow all of God's commandments to do right and to uh, reject uh, doing reject those things that are evil and wicked and sinful. So the next verse, Proverbs chapter uh, 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We read that it's the beginning of wisdom, but the fear is also the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instructions. Fool? <laughs> Who wants to be a fool? A fool has said his heart, there is no God. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom again and the knowledge. So this one uh, includes the wisdom and the knowledge uh, for the holy uh, of the holy is understanding. So you hear that a lot. You know, people pray, Lord, you know, grant us um, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah, you want to have knowledge, and that's why I like to teach rather than so the, to preach so much. Uh, to I want you to get it in there. I want you to have the knowledge, but I want you to understand the knowledge. 
And that's why I study to present to you so you can understand. I hope I'm doing a, a, a good job for putting it out there. And then I hope that you have the wisdom that the Holy Spirit will guide you mm -hmm. to apply that knowledge that hopefully you understand. A serious dread of sin and a yearning for what is right before God is evidence that you are working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Say it again. Say it again. Let me say it again. A serious dread of sin and a yearning for what is right before God is evidence of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to seriously dread sin and you got to yearn for what is right. The more you love God, the more you should hate sin. I mean, you don't do things. You don't do the things you used to go. You, I mean, do it. You don't go to the places you used to go. You refrain from those things. Proverbs 28, 14. We're going to be taking it home soon. We're about to close. It says, Happy is the man that feareth always which is always. But ye that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Always operate with fear and trembling because salvation is always. You have to operate in the fear and trembling so that you don't fall into mischief. The perseverance of your faithful obedience is a must. Perseverance. You have to continue in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure the, unto the end, the same shall be saved. So what am I getting at here? Your salvation has a past, a present, and a future. You have been saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. Let me get into this a little more. From the beginning to the end, the entire divine work of salvation is under God's control. Does that mean, is it just God's control? Or is it your control too? Is your control too with the help of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. let, me, let me break down the past, the present, and the future. The past is when you place your faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord and you were redeemed and you started living right. You started exercising your faith, reading your Bible, uh, fellowshipping with like-minded believers, uh, praying to God, doing good deeds and works. The faith, that's the faith part. That's what you... Um, that's what you do, would do once you're redeemed. And so that's happened. But is it still happening? The presence is the time between now and your death. If the, unless the good Lord, you know, while the, unless the good Lord tarries, or let's just say until, let's say he, he comes soon. People are saying he's coming soon. I don't know how soon is soon. <laughs> but really, my thing is that don't, you shouldn't even focus on when Jesus is coming back because you can be gone soon. <laughs> before we come back. And so, that's why it's important in the presence, during this time before uh, that you're saved right now in the rapture or your death, you got to continue to operate through faith. And in the future, that is when the salvation is completed. Because, you know, once you're there, once you've made it to the promised land, you're in the promised land. <laughs> Silent Martin Luther King. Let freedom yeah. ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. I know that. I'm not going to go into it right now. Uh, keep the faith and continue in the grace of God to preserve you in salvation. So keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. All right. Two more scriptures here. And then uh, we're going we're gonna to close. Uh, in Acts chapter 13, verse 43. I'm talking about continuing, I'm talking about perseverance, continuing the faith. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to
to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Continue in the grace of God. So we got to continue in that grace that he has provided. And how do we do that? Let's look at Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting his, uh, I mean, them to continue in the faith. So we'll continue in the grace of God, but how do we do it? We're by continuing in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. uh, that was a key thing there through much tribulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this world is going to be against you as you're living a righteous life. Amen. It's hard to even watch to turn the TV on these days because oh, the stuff you see and the, the stuff that is being, that's in law, the stuff that the government uh, is enforcing, mm -hmm. you know, and so persecution is coming, people. I'm telling you. Yeah. Right. We still got to keep the faith through all of that. Mm -hmm. Jesus was mistreated. The apostles were mistreated. Believers will be mistreated. To work out your own salvation, your faith must cooperate with God's grace. When I think of the word work out, I think about exercising. You know, we're working out. That's one of the Jesus was working out. He will work it out. All right, so exercise your faith. Read your Bible. Pray. Love the Lord. Love people. Deny yourself. Uh, fellowship with like-minded believers. And make Jesus Christ, make the Lord, your relationship with him, your priority. Work out your own salvation. I sure hope that you all are, are, have received this message. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Trembling and everything will be all right. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word. I pray, Lord God, that every heart and mind was ready to receive it. And Lord God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would help every individual who received it, help them to live it out to walk in it, to exercise their faith, Lord God, because they're going to come up against the world. They're going to come up against tribulations and trials and temptations. And so, Father God, please help them, Lord God, to be strong. Give them strength that they can walk, continue to walk in the grace that you have provided and by doing it through the faith that they must adhere to, Lord God, to do right. So help them, Father God. Thank you, thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity for us to come together in person and virtually uh, for this word. And it's for your, your glory, it's for your love, Lord God, and the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So thank you all for tuning in. I'm placing on the screen that if you would like to sow into Transformation Ministries, uh, there's uh, various ways to uh, do so, and it's up on the screen. But again, thank you all for tuning in. I, I pray that um, this message is something that you needed to hear and hopefully that it was something you wanted to hear. And um, tune in next week. I don't know what the message is going to be yet, uh, whatever the Lord gives me, but uh, come come, spend some time with us each week from noon, well, from about 12.25 to, it's not even one third, not even a whole hour, but um I really appreciate your presence. I really appreciate your prayers and your support. So God bless you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen.